Documentary films often give us a glimpse into the lives of animals, how they live, hunt, reproduce, and so forth. But have you ever wondered what happens on the other side of the camera at that moment? How are such shots captured, and how does the film crew stay safe? Now you will find out. In this episode, you'll see how animal documentaries are made. There are various techniques and methods for filming animals in the wild, all depending on the animals themselves and the location they are in. Hello and welcome to a new video. But before we start, if you're new to the channel, don't forget to subscribe and hit the notification bell so you can receive our videos right away. The first method is the simplest yet also the most challenging. Photographers call it close-up shooting. The idea is simple. The photographer gets as close to the animal as possible and shoots without any protection. This technique allows photographers to easily change angles and positions, sitting or lying down to get the shots, utilizing the camera to its fullest efficiency and creativity. It's often used for shooting birds, which can be harmless, predatory, or even large. Not many birds would attack a human, making it effective. It's also used for different animals that are used to humans or don't pose a threat. In this way, Various hoofed animals and the more curious ones, like the Jeanette, although predatory, are very small, curious, and not aggressive towards humans. Instead of attacking, they approach the photographers, stare into the lens, or even climb the camera or the photographer to give a performance. Close-up shooting can be combined with camouflage. The essence remains the same. The photographer stays as close to the animals as possible, but might be camouflaged as a sniper or hidden in makeshift hides, which are organically built into the animal's habitat without disturbing them. Protection is essential, but animals are unpredictable, and close-up shooting doesn't always work, especially with African predators, where close-up shooting can be dangerous. The photographer needs protection often inside a reinforced vehicle. Most shots of lions, cheetahs, hyenas, and other animals are taken from a car, but not just any car. First, it must be sturdy. Second, it must be reinforced against animal attacks. Cameras are usually mounted outside the car, fixed in a way that covers the maximum field of view and provides the best quality, directly operated from the car, to prevent image shake using stabilizers. To maintain quality, proper lighting adjustment is essential. Shooting from a protected vehicle is effective but not always possible in places where cars can't enter or it would be too dangerous, like the Arctic. Unlike lions, polar bears aren't used to cars, and shooting from a vehicle might not be an option. People can shoot from a distance or use a protected cage positioned appropriately. The photographer enters and shoots the animals with the camera. Sometimes polar bears attack these cages, but this way people get better shots. This happens sometimes in Africa too, for close-up shots of lions naturally. In this case, the cage or camera can be covered with meat as bait, so the predators come by themselves. Another safer option is to simply leave the cameras in a suitable place and wait. After a day or two, the photographers return, collect the cameras, and review the footage. The advantage is seeing the natural behavior of animals, unaware they are being filmed. The downside is the difficulty of controlling the shots and the time it takes to view and select the appropriate moments. Fortunately, we live in an age of technology, so no one has to risk their lives or spend hours setting up cameras in the wild. Robots can be used. Most modern documentaries are made with their help, including robotic tanks. These are small, portable devices with cameras, incredibly durable because no predator can break them. Controlled by humans, they approach dangerous animals quietly and film exciting details of their lives. The main thing is not to scare the animals or make the robot seem threatening. The animals must know it's safe. Then they stop paying attention to it and behave naturally. Animal-shaped robots equipped with cameras can also be used. The main advantage is that animals consider them as peers or enemies, so they behave naturally, which is crucial for capturing high-quality footage. For example, people use bird-shaped robots to film birds and also to see how prey reacts to seeing a dangerous bird. 
Gorillas, wary of strangers, are filmed by gorilla robots, and the same applies to other primates. This filming sometimes reveals surprising details and new facts about them, like their ability to mourn their dead as humans do. These robots are great for capturing dangerous shots of large predators. For example, to film a shark hunting, photographers used a normal camera and a camera inside a high seal, and a drone filmed everything from above. The shark, unaware everything was staged, acted naturally, providing us with fantastic hunting shots. Other methods for filming birds like GoPro cameras are used. What? Do you think only humans can film with them? Animals are good at it too. Just find the animal you want to film, attach the camera to it, and let it become a cameraman, or rather, a camera animal. It does all the work, especially effective with birds. No one can rise and fly as beautifully as the bird itself. Shots like these make any documentary better and more impressive, even the most boring ones, and are also used on various predators in the wild. If done carefully and correctly, equipping a cheetah or even a lion with a GoPro can capture shots during hunting, worth a lot. A photographer alone couldn't capture such moments, but sometimes animals can. Big cats being curious might steal the camera hidden somewhere and start their own wildlife vlog. Editors sometimes save these shots and add them to the documentary. This way, underwater or semi-underwater life can also be filmed. The principle is the same. Attach the camera to some harmless fish or even a shark and leave it to return with unique footage. Drones have become an integral part of documentaries. All shots from high altitudes, flights, and views of animal herds from above are filmed with their help. It's interesting that in the past, such things were filmed with helicopters, but sometimes it's still done today. However, helicopters are noisy, so it's not profitable to film from them, and they scare the animals, often ruining the shots. Drones are quiet, small, and might not even be noticed by animals, thanks to which we get enjoyable and beautiful footage. This is obvious for wild animals and birds, but what about underwater? There are documentaries about whales, sharks, and unusual fish species. How are they made? Of course, as you think, made by people. A crew member wears a diving suit, grabs a camera, and dives there to film plants and animals. If the sea or river creatures are safe, the photographer diver might not need assistance. But if filming predatory animals, support from above might be necessary to eliminate the threat if something goes wrong. Underwater cages can also be used. You've already seen how polar bears and lions are filmed up close from inside cages. The same principle applies here. These cages are used by regular divers who want to experience new sensations and see marine animals up close, and by photographers with their professional cameras. Of course, other tricks are also used, like filming under ice, sometimes with the help of a special camera placed on some kind of rails in the middle of cracked ice. Shots near the water surface can be captured from a boat or ship equipped with cameras that can be fixed or rotate only on the horizontal level, or can be more complex, where people can lower them into the water and capture shots directly from the ship's surface without fear of predators. That's the end of the video. If you enjoyed it, don't forget to hit the like button.